I'm with uh, Cormac Russell at a seminar in Manchester on asset-based community development where we've had some terrific presentations from him and Jim Dyers and great uh, ideas and contributions from uh, people at the seminar about what this means at community level and it's all about focusing on strengths, assets and not starting with what's the problem, what's the need, although obviously those have to be met. Um, as you know Cormac, um, the big lottery fund is uh, endorsing ABCD and uh, thinking about next steps on its people powered change program. So looking a bit from the top rather than just from the bottom now, what can funders like Big Lottery, who want to move beyond fund, maybe reshape their funding, move beyond funding to help people learn from each other, um, what do you suggest they should be thinking about? So there are a range of things I think that funders can do. Uh, the first is to think about their funding criteria. And there are really good models that they can actually learn from. So one of the best is the Kellogg's Foundation who actually made the transition from being a needs-based organization to being an asset-based organization. So literally, they can lift this off the shelf. And it's one of the most powerful levers, actually, because most people relate to funders so directly through uh, funding criteria. So if the criteria actually encouraged people to map their assets rather than their deficiencies, that would immediately be a game changer. That could be done if the political will is there to do it. We have the technical know-how to show organizations. So it's really a matter for organizations to make the decision. Uh, the answer to how is yes, the technical know-how is there already. Um, so that's one thing. I think the other is for organizations to become more asset-based themselves and stop focusing on their employees' deficits and actually start focusing on their employees' strengths. Because if it becomes true in the organization that they actually value strengths, then the people who work in communities will actually be congruent with that as well and start valuing the strengths of community. I think there are other things that can be done. There's health nurses and beat bobbies all over this country who are naturally connecting community. Let's support them instead of vilifying them or leaving them to burn out without support. Actually noticing that this work is being done and noticing that community building, uh, which really builds relationships, is where probably best bang for the book is going to be. And beginning to invest in community builders in every neighborhood that can build those relationships will give us the return on investment as uh, money becomes more scarce and harder to reach. What might the first questions be on the application form, rather than what's the problems and needs in, in your community? And maybe secondly, what sort of reports might they want from people for monitoring and evaluation? So one of the first questions might be, what do you have and how can you use it to get what you need? Um, I think with regard to reporting, it would be really interesting to do a baseline in a community and find out how many relationships and connections people have, which actually lead them to securing um, both a relationship where they can contribute their gifts and also where they can get their needs met, and then beginning to compare how their money is changing that and how new relationships and new citizen-led projects are actually emerging in the UK. The great measure of change, I think, in terms of investing is do we see more citizen-led action that lasts over time and actually sustains community life? Um, I guess one of the other difficulties that um, you know, most funders and organizations want their logo up there, they want to brand their program and so on. But I guess if you take the community building approach, you would say at that top level, look around at what the other people are doing. Let's not duplicate, let's share, let's link up. Is that feasible or are the institutional barriers too much for us? Well, one of the, the beauties of austerity is, is, is that whether people politically want to or not, we don't have the money anymore to empower communities to death. So if we have police departments who are doing community outreach and we have health departments and PCTs and local governments and VCSs all outreaching the same community, then whether we like it or not now, we may actually need to have a different conversation, which is a conversation about how we can take a percentage of that money and invest it in community builders rather than having 10 and 15 programs that are represented effort and actually empowering communities to death and often dividing them and distracting them from the agenda of community building. And do you think there's something that government could uh, do to give this a nudge? The big society rather faded as a, as a kind of call to action but it's there as a policy um, framework and maybe we, we need a, um, a more filling out of the framework with some of these principles that you're talking about. Any ideas what that might look like? 
So I think that what we're actually calling people to in the first instance is conversation. Um, and at local government level and VCS level and probably central government especially, there are powerful agents who can actually convene conversations that begin to honestly try to identify the, the capacities that people have locally. So I think, for example, the big lunch is coming up uh, in the not-too-distant future, being funded by a, a big lottery. It would be amazing if during that big lunch or other such convenings, people could have a conversation about three questions. What is, what is it they can do with people power? What do they need help with from outside? And what do they expect the government to do unilaterally? I think the government could convene or help convene conversations like that.